my lovelies. It is time for my Y'all Fest vlog. So stay tuned. So it is the day before we are leaving to head to Charleston. Uh, we're getting there a day before everything begins because, well, I don't want to be driving there and miss anything the day of because most of y'all fest is on Saturday, but there are things on Friday. Um, usually there's more things on Friday, but because they're doing a lot of virtual stuff uh, this year, they're not doing quite as much in person as normally they would, but I'm still excited for what they are doing. I think it's mostly going to be just signings and of course some panels. Uh, so yeah, but they're not going to be doing like the arc drops and things like that as far as I know anyway. So today is all about prepping, getting my bags packed, getting my books packed that I want to take and get signed. Uh, I'm actually fixing to go to the library and pick up a book because uh, a book I requested has finally come in. So I'm going to pick that up before we go and figure out my reading and get audiobooks ready, all of that good stuff. And take you along with me. So let's go. Please ignore the unmade bed, but I'm working on packing up the last little bit right now. And so I thought I'd show you that. We are just about ready to go. We need to finish this packing, load everything up in the car. We're gonna eat before we leave. And then we are headed out. So these are the books that I plan on taking with me for reading purposes. So I'm currently reading The Blood of Olympus. This is my buddy read uh, book for the week. Uh, I'm also physically reading Unremembered. And then Marty wanted to listen to the audiobook of The Ballads of Songbirds and Snakes, so I need to get that. And then I also have Final Draft on hoopla so I'm gonna bring this and then I also plan on bringing the manga fairy tale we'll see how much I actually get through with all of that but that's what I'm planning on bringing along but I'm gonna have to put that my books I think I'm gonna put my books in this bag and just have this bag in the car with me to access things I need so which is pretty much just any books <laughs> All right, so I think I'm done packing. I hope I'm done packing. I hope I'm not forgetting anything. I gotta remind Marty to get the immunization, yeah, our like vaccine cards because you have to be vaccinated to attend anything. So yeah. All right, I will talk to you later.
So we have made it to our room. Uh, Marty and I listened to the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes on the way up here. And we got to page 364. So I'd say maybe like two thirds of the way through. And it's okay. I'm not disliking it. I don't really get yet what the point is. Uh, you know in regards to the rest of the Hunger Games series but it's okay I'm enjoying it and uh, as far as reading goes that's that's been it and we are getting ready to go and find some food it's around seven o'clock now maybe 7 15 something like that so we are going to do a little walk and find some dinner Good morning. So we are getting ready to head out. We have to go and get our wristbands for, um, you take your vaccine cards, uh, you're like your COVID vaccine cards and you get a wristband saying that you've been vaccinated or whatever, um, before you can go and do any other signings or anything. So we have to go and do that. And I have our suitcases packed up for the day. We're taking, Marty's taking one and I'm taking one because we're gonna be splitting up for part of the time. And uh, he's gonna be getting some books signed. I'm gonna be getting some books signed. So I've got them all like coordinated into the right suitcases. We also have our, each have our own schedule to follow. So uh, yeah, I'm going to be bringing along Unremembered by Jessica Brody and I might also start listening to Final Draft because I really need to be listening to that because uh, I checked it out, I don't know, like a week ago or something. So I need to, I need to get to it uh, before my library takes it back. Anyway, um, that's my plan for today. Marty. Okay, I went and grabbed our like little schedules that we have. So Marty is going to go and see E. Lockhart, Neil Schusterman, and Soman Ch Chani, um, which is like the author of the School of Good and Evil, I believe is what it's called, series. Uh, and I am going to see uh, Nick Stone, Grady Hendrix, and then we are gonna meet up at Melissa Dela Cruz because I have a lot, a lot of her books. <laughs> it's gonna take both of us to get those signed. Uh, so that's the plan. <sighs> My schedule has changed up a little bit because it was supposed to be Grady Hendrix first and then Nick Stone, but her time's gotten moved up like two hours. So she will be the first person I see. All right, we're gonna finish getting ready and I'll take you along.
head keeps on going. So we found out that there is a holiday festival of lights going on this weekend. So since today is a short day as far as signings and all that goes, we are getting ready or we're on our way to this festival of lights and I thought I would film a lot of that because it just seems like fun. Christmas lights and there's like Santa and a, like a winter village and all of that stuff so fun. So let's go and have some holiday cheer.
Good morning. So it is day two of Y'all Fest, or the first, the, the only official day of Y'all Fest. Uh, I've gotten like this much reading done, very, very little. Uh, this morning I did start listening to Final Draft and I got to page 91. I'm about a third of the way through it. Uh, I was listening to it while I was doing my makeup. And I'm enjoying it so far. It's about a girl who is like your know, favorite in her creative writing class. And, and she's like got this A and all she does all the time is writing and it's like it's her thing. And then something happens and towards the end of the year and her teacher, her favorite teacher, her number one fan, uh, he has to be temporarily replaced until the end of the school year. And he was replaced by this Pulitzer Prize winning author who, well, immediately gives her an F. And she's just flabbergasted, I guess is the appropriate word for it, and is questioning everything. And I'm enjoying it. Uh, I also, I brought Unremembered along to read, but like while I'm actually waiting in line and stuff, but when I'm in line, for the most part, I'm chatting with the people around me, I'm passing out bookmarks, I'm, I'm I just, I can't seem to sit and read when I'm like surrounded by all these bookish people. So, uh, I did read a little bit last night before I went going to bed. I'm currently on page 57. I am also really enjoying this. It's about, well, it starts out with this plane has crashed and they're going like through the wreckage that's like floating out in the ocean and they find this girl and she's the only survivor. But the only thing is, she has no memory of anything, of herself, of anything. She doesn't know what a television is, or a hospital, or a car, or anything. She doesn't know food she likes. She doesn't know her name. And she has like no fingerprints uh, that, that they can find, or DNA. She shouldn't even exist. And she wasn't on the plane manifest. so. People are very confused and nobody's come forward to like claim her or anything and yeah that's all I really know about it um, the only thing that she can recall is and it's not even that she can really recall it it's when they're asking her all these questions in the beginning like what is your name and how did you get here and who are you flying with and things like that she couldn't answer any of those but when they asked her what year it was, she said 1609. So I don't know if this is like a time travel book or what, but that's all I know. And yeah, so far I'm really enjoying it. Uh, but yeah, I haven't had a chance to like do a lot of sit down and reading just because I am wanting to interact with everybody that's around me at the festival. Uh, but yeah, we are going. We have lots of books to get signed today. Uh, we have a panel we want to go to, and we want to go to the um, YA Smackdown. So, full, full day. Hopefully, this video is not going to be too ridiculously long when I edit it. But Marty and I are once again going to be splitting up for part of the day so he can go and get signatures, and I can go and get signatures at the same time and uh, just conquer the day. All right, let's go.
they gave me my own Yafa sign. Yay! <laughs> Woo! Um, and so basically, I called everyone and I said, hey, we're going to write a book together. And like, even my Mississippian and my Georgian, I was like, you got to be in this too. So you get to be on the subway and you get to be. Tone matters. Yes. I was like. was not, hey, you're going to be in this. So, was, so this is what we're doing. You're going to do this. And this is what I needed. Yes. That was, and this is our duty. And you're doing a love time. Like it was like. Yeah, like here's your trope. Yeah. I need it now. Yes. And you see, like, the most hilarious part about this is like everyone got this call and then she got to me and I was like, no. Yes. <laughs> she really tried to try my patience. She really tried to try my patience. I always wanted to pull a buck against her because I'm just like, I don't know. And then I was like, because I kept saying, you know, I, I write pretty dark books. So when she came to me saying, we want you to write a love story, I was like, she really did. She was like, she was like, like, she was like, she was like, she was when she pitched the idea and she was saying like, you know, it could be like Love Actually, Valentine's Day, and that, all I heard was like, well, then they need to be all interconnected. Yeah. And that's the only way I can write this story. And so that was basically like, it was kind of my fault that the book got a little bit more complicated because I was like, well, I need to break up my story and then everyone needs to like come and like be connected with me. <laughs> so you see who the real queen is. Yeah. 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 And then, us doing this blackout. There was a lot to be said about the fact that blackouts are very much a part of New York culture because it literally stops the city, it stops it cold. Um, and, but the thing is, like especially after 9-11, our city really very much comes together when it comes to like, you know, traumatizing, you know, scenarios. And that's what we wanted to sort of show in this as well too, is that, you know, it wasn't all scary. There were kids falling in love. Um, in the middle of a blackout, and so I think that was one of the reasons why I took uh, the longest, the long walk, the longest chapters, and the longest uh, little like excerpts, and stuff like that. But um, but everyone else did an amazing job in their very like siloed like areas. Like we had a library, we had the train, we had the bus. Like I felt like everyone had just nailed it. Danielle knows that I'm not a New Yorker. I mean that's obvious. Um, I'm from Mississippi, which is a totally different world. I could not live in New York. I could visit. I could live there. So she was like, you don't have to write New Yorkers. And I was like, oh, thank God. Because that's like alien to me. So I'm writing, <laughs> thank you. I'm writing some kids from Mississippi who are on a tour bus visiting New York with their class. And Danielle told me, your trope is love triangle because you think about all of these big YA books, no shade to anyone, but you think about all these big YA books where you see love triangles, how many of them have a black girl at the center? Well, technically, well, a lot of people think that the Hate You Give did, but like, the kid gets killed quickly, so that's my fault. <laughs> Let's 
make sure that they are okay, especially when every time they turn on the television, all they see are people like them getting beat up and killed or police. Yeah. And so we were like, let's give them something else to root for and be excited by. And that's why it was a no-brainer. Yeah. And it was so easy. I think for me it was super important to see not only black kids in love, but also black kids from New York in love. Yes. I feel like oftentimes when you see New York stories, it's usually like the bang bang shoot them up, or in the hood, everyone's struggling, surviving, and stuff like that. Or, or, or there's just no black people at all. Or there's just right. no black or people at all. Like, like how? But so for me, I'm like, because I did fall in love, like sitting on the train. I did like kiss boys, like, you know, walking like down because there's nothing incredibly magical, which I hope all of you one day visit New York. Not today though, because you know, like there's a lot going on. But <laughs> <laughs> we're recovering. We're, we're, we're all from the pandemic. Yes. Yeah. Um, but when you do, you definitely feel this magic in the air and in the city, which makes like falling in love there just so much more. Like there's the chemistry there. It's just something like literally your hair, like the hair on your arms, like stand up because you're just like, wow, this person loves me. Out of a million trillion people in this one city, I found my person. So for me, I felt like I wanted to leave a legacy for younger Tiffany's who are growing up, who don't get to see just us being just normal kids. You know, um, in an industry that so often tries to pit authors against each other, black women against each other, make us feel that there can only be one, we said, <laughs> no, 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 but I think there's something powerful in that because, again, we're sometimes made to feel as if there can only be one. No, we said there can be six, there can be ten, there can be twenty, but for this book, there's going to be these six. <laughs> and we're going to do this together. And we're going to do this because it's for something greater than us. It's for you. It's for those girls, it's for those kids, those people, those boys, all of them, they're going to see themselves in this. It's more important than us individually. We're the Avengers, and we're here to bring love. That's right. So as you can see, we are back home. We went, we conquered, we got lots of signatures. We had brunch before we left and now we're home. And as far as my reading went while I was there, this is what I was hoping to read. What I actually read was, I finished my buddy read of The Blood of Olympus and Marty and I finished the ballads of songbirds and snakes. Uh, I'm gonna give this four stars. I really enjoyed it. I'm hoping that some of the characters in this one end up showing up in future series. I'm I'm really I really want to know with Leo <laughs> what's going on with him. Uh, but very much enjoyed this, and I give it four stars. I can't really tell you too much about it because it is the last book. It's book five. I think it's the last book in the Heroes of Olympus series. And uh, pretty much all I can say is that it's the like ultimate battle at the end. That's about it. Uh, the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. We both gave it three and a half stars. Uh, it, it wasn't bad. We did enjoy it. Was it necessary to the story? Definitely not. 
This is kind of like what led Snow to be where he is at the beginning of the Hunger Games. Uh, but yeah, three and a half stars. I did not read any of Fairy Tale. I only read to page 81 of Unremembered, though I am very much enjoying this. I I want to finish it. I just didn't. I just didn't <laughs> because I was chatting with everybody. And uh, for those of you that are new here and have subscribed since meeting me at Y'all Fest, I'm sorry if I annoyed you with giving so many bookmarks to you <laughs> because I was passing out bookmarks to everybody and some people I would ask, do you want a bookmark? Three or four times because I would see them multiple times throughout the weekend. But I was just asking everybody and... I would ask before I'd realize, oh, I already gave them one. <laughs> and so I'm pretty sure I annoyed some people, but hopefully not too bad. Uh, also, I listened to a little bit of Final Draft. I got to page 91 of this, though this should be quick because this is like a an audiobook that I'm listening to from Hoopla. So did not get nearly as much reading done as I wanted, but it's okay because... It was a special event. Anyway, that's gonna be it for this vlog. Oh, wait, uh, there was one other thing. So there's the big YA Smackdown and I was going to include parts of it in this vlog and I might still include a tiny little clip, but I filmed most of the YA Smackdown and it was so much fun. It's hard to choose like which things to actually include and which things not. So I was thinking I might just do an entire video with the YA Smackdown in it. Uh, it's definitely not going to be monetized because there's a lot of music on it that would get copyright issues. <laughs> but it was so much fun and I want to share it all for you. So I think I'm going to do that as a separate video. All right, I'm going to end this vlog here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this, click that subscribe button down below. And until next time, remember to always be completely you. Bye!